Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Um, this is a viewer suggested integral uh, from Evan Link 2414. Um, this is the integral. Uh, I'm sure it can be solved with Feynman integration. Uh, I, I'm doing this from scratch though. Um, I could use a previous result. Um, in fact, I, I'm, I'm going to be using a previous result, but I could use an even further along uh, previous result. Um, the result we are going to end up using is that uh, the integral from zero to infinity of sine tx over x dx is equal to pi over two for t greater than zero. Um, and I've shown that a bunch of times on this channel. And that's that's a fairly well known result. If uh, if you're watching this channel, that result is probably familiar to you. So I, I won't be rederiving that. Um, but let's just get started. So we're we're doing Feynman integration. So our first step is going to be to create a function of t that closely resembles that integral. So we're going to let f of t be equal to the integral from zero to infinity of one minus, and you probably guessed it, cosine tx over x squared, x squared plus one dx. And the motivation for that is because we can take a bunch of derivatives and cancel those x's out. Um, and also, it allows us to say this, that f at one, if we evaluate our function of t at one, we're going to get back our original integral. And if we evaluate it at zero, we'll get zero. And I'll leave it to you to, uh, to convince yourself of that. All right, next step. Take a derivative with respect to t using the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign, a concept that should, prob should be familiar to most of you if you've been a viewer of this channel for any time at all. So we're going to get f prime of t is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of sine tx over x, x squared plus one dx. And again, I'll leave it to you guys to convince yourself that this is true, it is. Okay, and then we'll note that f of z f prime of zero is equal to zero. All right, let me make sure I didn't make any mistakes. Yeah, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. That part drops out. We cancel one of the x's. Yeah, that's definitely true. Okay, so we're gonna go one more time. F double prime of t equals the integral from zero to infinity of, uh, let's see, now we're going to get cosine of tx over x squared plus one dx, right? Derivative of sines, cosine, cancel one of the x's, and we'll note that f double prime of zero is going to give us pi over two. That will evaluate to one. It's well. It's a well-known fact that the integral from zero to infinity of one over x squared plus one dx is equal to pi over two. All right, another derivative, because I mean this is still a bad integral. In fact, uh, this was the um, this was the result I thought about using to solve this, um, but this is not as well known as the. Uh, what do you call it, the Dirichlet integral? I forget how, you, I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's the uh, sine tx over x from zero to infinity equal, equaling uh, pi over two for t greater than zero. Um, so we're gonna go further with this one. We're going to take another derivative, um, f triple prime of t, and that's going to be equal to negative integral zero to infinity, x, and then I'm gonna leave a space. Um, and I'll put our sine of tx. 
and you'll see why I left that space in a minute. Um, and then we have x squared plus 1 dx. All right. Um, in fact, I think I should write this. Uh, oh, this is f triple prime. I think I should rewrite this over here because we're going to need some space. So, yeah. F triple prime of t is equal to negative integral 0 to infinity of x, and I will leave a space, sine tx over x, x squared plus 1 dx. The reason I left that space is this. I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by x. That'll give us an x squared. And this is still multiplication here. There's just a space in between it. And an x squared right there. And now, I'm going to put a parentheses around that x squared and introduce a plus 1 inside of the parentheses. Um, but that had the effect of really subtracting the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 times sine tx over x squared, x squared plus 1 dx. So we need to add that back. So we'll add back the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of tx over x, x squared plus 1 dx. All right. Uh, all right. There's no uh, there's no x squared there. That's just an x. That's just an x. Sorry. Okay. So the reason I did that was so that this and this would go away. And now we're left with just the integral from 0 to infinity, negative integral 0 to infinity of sine tx over x, which is pi over 2 for t greater than 0. And when we evaluate our final integral, our t will be greater than 0. All right. So this just becomes negative pi over 2. So our f triple prime of t is this. sine tx over uh, x times x squared plus 1 dx minus pi over 2. Okay. Now, uh, let's note that f triple prime of t is going to give us negative pi over 2. That'll be 0. 0 minus pi over 2 is negative pi over 2. All right. We're still not done taking derivatives. Um, let's take another derivative. f quadruple prime of t is equal to, and uh, I'm sorry, this should have been the integral from 0 to infinity of that. I had the dx, I just didn't integrate it from 0 to infinity. All right, so f quadruple prime of t is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity Of, okay, so we're going to end up with cosine of tx over um, x squared plus 1 dx. Okay. Well, now what do we have? We have uh, 
f double prime of t is equal to f quadruple prime of t. That's a differential equation. All right, so f double prime of t is equal to f quadruple prime of t. Okay, well, what do we do now? Let's integrate both sides. We can get, we can uh, get rid of some of these uh, prime notations by just taking an integral on both sides. So if we take the antiderivative of f double prime of t, we will get f prime of t is equal to f triple prime of t right, plus c. Okay, now we can use our f prime of zero is equal to zero, so we get zero is equal to f triple prime of t um, at zero, f triple prime, ah, it's not f triple prime of t, that's f triple prime of zero. f triple prime of zero we found to be negative pi over two is equal to negative pi over two plus c, right? Took an integral on both sides, we get f prime is equal to f triple prime plus c f prime at zero is zero minus f triple prime at zero, which is negative pi over two plus c. That implies that c is equal to pi over two. All right, what now? Let's go ahead and let's do the same thing we just did. We know that uh, f prime at zero is equal to, oh no, no, I'm sorry. We're going to take an integral on both sides. So now we're going to get f of t is equal to, um, f double prime of t plus the antiderivative of pi over 2, which is just pi t over 2, and then plus c. f of 0 is 0, and f double prime of 0 is pi over 2. That's going to give us 0 is equal to pi over 2, right, f double prime at 0 is pi over 2, plus 0 plus c. That implies this particular c right here is actually negative pi over 2. Well, it'd be nice uh, if we could simply plug in um, f of 1 to get i. And I guess we kind of could. Um, let's do that. Um, f at 1 is i. So, i is definitely going to be equal to uh, f double prime at 1. What is f double prime at 1? We don't know, but it is the integral from 0 to infinity of cosine x over x squared plus 1 dx at 1. 
So that's what it is. If we evaluate this at 1, we get pi over 2, and then minus pi over 2. So our i is equal, we've now reduced this integral. This is equivalent to this integral. Okay, so now let's start over. We've reduced that integral to a quote-unquote better one. So this is just cosine of x over x squared plus 1 dx. And I have evaluated this. We should get, we should get pi over e. That's what we should get. That's what I got last time or the other times I evaluated that. Um, you might be able to just uh, form a differential equation directly out of that and then solve that differential equation. But I, that, uh, I think that would probably involve variation of parameters, and I just don't want to do that. Um, so we'll just, what I did here is I just, I took the easy way out, and uh, I just plugged in 1. Our f of 1 is i, and our f double prime of t is, uh, I mean, our f double prime of 1 is this thing evaluated at 1. That's this. This evaluated at 1 is pi over 2, and then minus pi over 2 gives us 0. So i is just that integral right there. All right. So now we're starting over. I'm erasing all this stuff. And now we're going to solve that quote-unquote easier integral. We don't know that that's pi over e yet. I mean, I know it is, but I'm going to show why. Okay, so we're starting over. We know those two things are equivalent. We just showed it. So now we're going to start over with our Feynman integration. We're going to let f of t equal the integral from 0 to infinity of cosine tx over x squared plus 1 dx. Great. Okay, um, and now the process is going to be very, very similar to what we just did. Um, f at 1 is definitely equal to i, and f at 0 is pi over 2. f prime of t is equal to negative integral 0 to infinity of sine tx over x squared plus 1 times x dx. Again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to add, or no, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by x. then I'm going to add a plus 1 in there. That had the effect of subtracting the integral from 0 to infinity of sine tx over x times x squared plus 1 dx, so we need to add it back. And we know that this is negative pi over 2. So our f prime of t is equal to this. And I, I, I use the same sort of trick slash manipulation that I did uh, before in this video. Um, so that, that should not be uh, any like mystery as to, as to how I got that. Okay, so now what we do is we uh, observe that f prime of t is equal to negative, I'm sorry, f prime of zero 
is equal to negative pi over 2. All right, then we go, once again, taking more derivatives, f double prime of t is going to give us back our original f of t, and you'll see that in a second. The integral from 0 to infinity, integral uh, derivative of sine is cosine. We recover an x that cancels that x, and we just have cosine tx over x squared plus 1 dx minus the derivative of pi over 2, which is just 0. And that's just f of t. All right, so now we have this differential equation that f double prime of t is equal to f of t. Well, um, there are... Th this is... I'm not going to show how um, how to solve this differential equation. The general solution to this is f of t is equal to a times e to the t plus b times e to the negative t. And I'm going to show I'm going to show that that's true here. Um, now I didn't guess on that. There is a method to finding that. I'm not going to go over it. It's uh it's one of the simplest second order differential equations you, you can possibly solve. Um, but that's going to give us f prime of t is equal to a e to the t minus b e to the negative t. That that should be pretty clear. So f double prime of t you can see is definitely going to give us back our original f of t. Take the derivative of that and we still have a e to the t and then we'll have again plus b e to the negative t. So you can see that these two things are equivalent. All right I just wanted to show that that was true. If f double prime of t is equal to f of t then the general solution to that is this. f of t is some constant a times e to the t plus some other constant b times e to the negative t. Oh, I shouldn't have erased that. f prime of t is equal to a e to the t minus b e to the negative t. All right, now we can use these values right here. Okay, so f of 0 is equal to pi over 2. That means pi over 2 is equal to a plus b. And f prime at 0 is negative pi over 2. That means negative pi over 2 is equal to a minus b. Okay, so uh, that's a system of equations. Let's add them together. Pi over 2 plus negative pi over 2 is 0. And that's going to be equal to 2a plus 0. In other words, a is equal to 0. So uh, b is equal to pi over 2. And you can see that would, that would hold for uh, either one of these. If b is pi over 2, then negative pi over 2 is negative pi over 2. So for sure, b is pi over 2 and a is 0. b equals pi over 2 and a is equal to 0. We just showed that. All right. So if that's true, which it is, then our f of t simply becomes 0 e to the negative t plus b, which is pi over 2, times e to the negative t, which I will write as e to the t. And going back to f of 1 is equal to i, we end up with i is equal to this thing evaluated at 1, or pi over 2 e. <laughs> It looks like I made a mistake in my original assertion that that was going to be pi over e. 
Uh, so that's actually wrong. It's pi over 2e. The integral from negative infinity to infinity of this thing is pi over e, though. Okay, guys, well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that, and thank you, Evan Link, for suggesting this integral, and we'll see you guys next time.